I have always been alert. I was eight years old when I asked my grandmother if the only reason she believed in God is because she had fear of going to hell. I was that kid. <laughs> I was a menace. I was the kid with the questions. <laughs> I wanted to know everything that my mind could contain. And in that moment, I believed that that was everything because I felt that I was capable. But the world taught me quick that my inquisitive nature was a burden and not an asset. That questions were good for one thing and that thing was to drive me mad and that's exactly what I was, mad. I was angry that I was thinking deeper than those who claimed to be responsible for me. I was angry that I had questions that had no answers. And all I wanted was for someone to hold my hand and show me what was possible beyond the walls of my home. But once were just wishes and wishes were just words and where do words go when they're not heard? So what did I do? I was lost, and I did the same thing that everybody who was lost does. I cruised on the highway of hurt, and what hurt even more is that for black kids with no power, times like those are rush hours. Each of us sat behind each other, all tuned into the same station, the one telling us that we aren't worth anything, that we were something to be fought over and dealt with, that what we were what was wrong with the world. I think back to when Mr. Fleming left to start an empire, and he called all his children home. I didn't come back because I didn't need anybody. I would step in his classroom and rev myself up. I would fill myself with feels to get me from who they said I would be to who I was. He taught me how to think. He told me that the responsibility for an answer was with the one who asked the question and I became invincible. I could outwit and outthink anybody I met. So I didn't need anybody. So when he called us home, that's what I had said. That claim was absolute. I didn't have any room for exception, so I took my inheritance and I left. And I squandered it and found myself on this highway of hurt. I walked through the world as a bully, using my intellectual prowess as a weapon. And so when I found myself back on that highway that I fought so hard to get off, I thought, how could this be? I did not know where I was going, and I was too smart to negate that. So what should I do? I had to get off. I was in dire need of an exit, but I fought with myself, my own ego for control of the will because I knew that I only had one place to go back to. But it was too late. I crashed face front into my potential and flipped through the air and what should have been by liberation had me strapped in by my depression and hanging from my trauma with gas, dripping from my tank, one more wrong reaction and I would have self-destructed. I watched the people that I knew pass me by because since they saw it coming, it didn't mean anything to them or they didn't care in the first place. I accepted defeat. And even in my defeat, I was stubborn because if I had to ask for help to meet you on a first responder. But then suddenly, I was lifted from what should have been my unavoidable doom and placed in a symposium that for me was an emergency room. I had a second chance pumping through my veins and I paced myself to back together. Every day that I stepped in this room, I was prepared never to drive again. And to the man who in the story is the father looked at me and said, even though you lost your way, you never stopped being exceptional. He told me that I never stopped being great. And so now I drive at great speed with HTP as insurance that one cannot get lost when you aren't simply driving, but you're delivering. Amen. The gifts that God gave me were never for me. They were for everybody that I was supposed to impact with my life. So now I drive with my lane set aflame with the work of a change agent, and that is to serve. I think back to how angry while I was, to how angry that I can still get, and I realize that I cannot be angry anymore because anger does nothing for anybody here, but understanding does, but overcoming does. So I say thank you to everybody in this room for rescuing me. I say thank you to the Lord who on the road told me that I was amazing and showed the world that I was amazing as well. I thank the trustees who trust me to change the world. I say thank you to the person who was in charge of my operation, who was now the director to tell us all where we are supposed to be going, and to the man and the story who is the father, who welcomed me back home with arms wide, the prodigal daughter.
Thank you. Yes.